Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is rational numbers and decimals. Okay, so um, rational numbers are typically fractions uh, which can be converted to decimals and decimals can be converted to fractions. We'll do that in a later lesson. Um, but here there's our common course strand for our, our most awesome teachers and then our, our answer, our question here is uh, how can we convert a rational number to a decimal? Okay. So describing uh, decimal forms of rational numbers, of fractions. So a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio, which means fraction, of two integers, a and b, <clears throat> a over b. That's what it should say, but it doesn't. But uh, where b is not 0, because you can't divide by 0. Remember that from prior lessons? So you can't have 0 in the bottom, because it makes that fraction fall over if you saw that lesson. So anyways, if you didn't, that doesn't make sense. But uh, you just can't divide by 0. Anyway, so for example, 4 sevenths is a rational number because 4 and 7 are both integers. And then so is 0 0.37 because 0 0.37, check this out, you guys. Remember decimal place value? This is tenths right here. This is hundredths right here. So this is read as 37 hundredths. And so written, it's 37 hundredths right there. So these are both integers. So um, uh, this decimal is also a rational number right there, okay? Because we can represent it as a fraction, a ratio of, of integers. All right, so let's pick up a calculator to find equivalent decimal forms of each fraction. So we're going to go ahead and use our calculator to find the decimal forms of each uh, fraction right here. Okay, so and then if we ever get repeating decimals, you can just like 0.3333333, so we can write 0.3 three, three with a bar on top of it, and that just means the threes repeat, okay? Sometimes more than one decimal repeats, like 0.1212, uh, you'll see later. Okay, so let's go ahead. You're gonna, you can't see my cursor when I do this, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up my calculator. And what you're going to do is you're going to do some dividing. You just divide the top number divided by the bottom number. So, so here, let's do... Uh, one fourth. So I'm going to go one divided by four. I know what this is. You guys probably do too. Is 0.25. Okay. So that's that one. Let's do five divided by eight. Five divided by eight. You wish it was this easy throughout the lesson, but it almost is. So 0.625. So we get that. So uh, two divided by three. Two divided by three equals now this rounds you guys it's actually 0 0.6666666666 forever and ever and ever and ever and ever but this calculator rounds to that last digit with a seven so 0 0.666 is the same as a uh, 0.6 with a bar on top of it right there okay two ninths so when we do that you'll find that that's 0 0.22222 which is a uh, 0.2 with a bar on top of that and 12 divided by five is 2.4 okay so this next part right here you guys is um, now find the corresponding fraction of those decimal equivalents over there in the last two columns and write the fractions in simplest form. Okay, so I'm going to do place value, you guys. So, so two ends in the tenths position. The first digit after the decimal is the tenths position. Like here, this is tenths hundreds, thousands. So this is uh, 875 over 1,000. This is 2 over 10, okay? And 2 over 10 uh, reduces to 1 fifth right there. So if you punched in 1 divided by 5, you'd get 0.2. Okay, all right, so 0 0.875, that 5 ends in the thousandths place, so 875 thousandths. And then let's pick up our calculator again. I know 25, I know 25 goes into 100 uh, four times, so 25 goes into 1,040 times. I know 25 goes into that. Let's see, so if I do 25, or 875 divided by uh, 25, okay, so... 875 divided by 25. I don't know why you can't see my cursor, because I can, and my students can on my board, and all of a sudden you can't hear. So I get 35, so it's 35 over 40, okay, and 35 over 40, 5 goes into both of those. 5 goes into this uh, 7 times, 5 goes into 48 times, so 7 eighths. And check this out, if we did 7 divided by 8, it would get me that decimal, 0. 0.875, okay? All right, so there we go. Okay, so what did you notice about the digits after the decimal point in the decimal forms or for, of the fractions, okay? So that was kind of hard to see what they're asking for, but they want you to recognize that this one stops. It, they call it terminates. So 0.25, and it doesn't keep going and going and going, so it stops. So they call it, this one's a terminating decimal. So is this one, because it stops at 5 right there, 0.625. 
This one's a, called a repeating decimal. So this one's a repeating decimal. This is a terminating decimal, terminating decimal, terminating decimal, because it stops. But if it keeps going on forever and ever and ever, it repeats. Okay, sometimes they don't repeat, but it goes on forever and ever and ever. Those are not rational numbers. Like the number called pi. Pi, you guys have probably heard of pi before, the 3.14. Well, actually, that's a really crude approximation of pi. It's 3.14159, and then I forget after that. I used to have a student that knew the first hundred digits of pi. But pi goes on forever and ever and ever. It doesn't repeat. There's no pattern. It just keeps going. So anyways, we'll talk about that when we get into our geometry units. Okay. So anyway, so there's the answer. The digits after the decimal point either repeat or terminate, which means they end. Okay. So let's consider this goofy-looking decimal, 0.101001001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then five zeros and one. Do you think this decimal represents a rational number? Well, the dot 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 says it's not terminating, so it's not terminating. Is it repeating itself? No, there's a definitely a pattern, but it's not repeating itself, so it can't be a rational number. Since the digits after the decimal point do not terminate and they don't repeat, it does not represent a rational number. Okay, so do you think a negative sign affects whether or not a, a number is a rational number or not? And then use a negative 8 fifths as an example. Well, negative 8 is an is a integer, you guys, and so is 5. So that's an integer over an integer. Integers can be negative. They're just counting numbers and negative counting numbers. So so, um, so the, the negative sign doesn't make it change, you guys. So negative 8 fifths is negative 1.6, which is a terminating decimal. And since that terminates, it's called a rational number. And also because you have integers. Anytime you have an integer over an integer, rational number. Do you think that a mixed number is a rational number? Explain. Well, sure, yeah, because mixed numbers can be written as an improper fraction, which is the ratio of two integers. So yes, mixed numbers are also rational numbers. In fact, 2.5, that's a terminating decimal. So that's a rational number, okay? So, all right, the two and one half is 2.5, okay? Writing rational numbers as decimals. Okay, so we can convert rational numbers to decimals using long division. So you might have to do that on some of your assignments. So some are terminating decimals, which means they stop uh, because the decimals come to an end, and some repeat. Okay, so uh, indefinitely, they just keep repeating, repeating. So write each rational number as a decimal. Okay, and they want us to do long division. Okay, so I know this one's negative, but what you do is we divide uh, the 16 into the 5. Okay, now I know you guys love long division. I know, you guys kind of don't. It's kind of a drag. I understand, but don't give up on yourself. I mean, you guys can do this. I'm per I know you guys can. All right, so how many times does 16 go into 5? It doesn't, so we put a 0 on top. Okay, and then, so what we're going to do is add a decimal after that 5 and put another 0. And then, then we ask, and then how many times does 16 go into 50? Well, I know 16 times 3 is 48, so I'm going to put 3 right there. So 16 times 3, and then we subtract. 50 minus 48 is 2. Now what do we do? Do you remember what we do now? We're going to add another 0 and drop it down. Does that ring a bell? Okay, and then how many times does 16 go into 20? Once. So we'll put a 1 right here and a 16 down here and then subtract. Okay, so uh, 20 minus uh, 16 is 4. Add another 0, carry it down. 16 goes into 42 times, which gives us 32. Subtract, add another 0, carry it down. And then we're almost done, you guys. 16 times 5 equals 80. So once we get a remainder of 0, we're done with the long division, okay? Otherwise, it'll repeat itself, okay? All right, so so now remember, it's, it's a negative answer. So negative 5 16 is the same as negative 0 0.3125, okay? All right, how about this one? 13 over 33. So 33 goes into 13. I'm going to add the decimal point. Don't forget to carry the decimal straight up. Okay, up on top of the division bar right there. And then 33 times uh, 3 is 99. So when we subtract, we get uh, 31. And then I know 33 times 10 is 330. So if we take off 33 off of 330, that's going to get me 297. So 33 times 9 is 297. Okay, I'm sorry, bring the zero down. Okay, and then, um, then we do that and subtract. And hey, we get 130 again. Do you remember seeing that up above? 33 times 3 is 99. Do you remember seeing that? 
Okay, 31. Look, it starts repeating itself. Okay, one more time. So 33 times uh, 9 is 297, and we get 130. It's, we're going in circles now, so it's repeating 0 0.393939, 39, so 13 33rds is 0 0.39 with a bar over the 39, because that just repeats. Okay, all right, so this is where probably a good time for, um, uh, for you guys to, to practice a little bit and pause this video. I am not going to go through that because I already have uh, almost 90 pages right here and it just starts to overload if I get too many on here. So I didn't do these long divisions, but, but here you're going to go 7 goes into 4.0 and this one's going to carry a lot of zeros. This one's dirty pool, you guys. Um, and then 3 goes into 1.0. 20 goes into uh, 9.0, okay? All right, so so hopefully um, you're pausing this because I'll show you the answers here. Okay, so negative 4 sevenths. Again, that one's just dirty pool, you guys. It just keeps going. I don't even know if it repeats or terminates, you guys. I should have picked up my graphing calculator. It has more digits on it. Watch, I'll do it on this calculator. And it rounds. It rounds that, that 8 at the end to a 9, so... Let's see if I go here and do um, 4 divided by 7, 4 divided by 7. Um, see, it rounds that 2, 8 to 2, 9, so that, that digit after the 8 is, is 5 or more. So I don't know if it ends or re it has to end because it is a rational number. So that's an integer and that's an integer right there. So this definitely has to end. I just didn't carry it all the way out. And again, that one's just that, that, they're messed up giving you that one. Anyways, so 1 divided by 3 is that 0 0.3333333, which is a 0 0.3 with a bar on it. Okay, 9 divided by 20, so it's negative. Remember, watch the negative signs. That's the most common errors. Students and teachers forget the negative signs. Okay, so negative 0.45. So these would be fair game, a totally fair game. I would, I would take those. This one would be like an extra credit, I would think, you know, for long division. I would think that one is an extra credit one. Anyway, and you guys can do it. It just takes a little bit longer. All right, so Sean rode his bike um, uh, six and three-fourths miles to the Science Museum. Write six and three-fourths as a decimal. Okay, I know it's going to be six point something. We just got to convert uh, three-fourths to the point something, okay? So write the fractional part, the three-fourths part, as a decimal, okay? So there it is, long division. Probably you guys already knew that three-fourths is 0.75, but here it is. So three uh, divided by four added to zero, and then so four goes into 37 times, we get 28, subtract, we get two, slide down another zero, so it becomes 20, four goes into 25 times, and we get a remainder of zero. So it's 0 0.75, so this 0 0.75 is representing this three-fourths right here, so six and three-fourths is the same as uh, six plus three-fourths, which is the same as six plus 0.75, or 6.75, okay? So just do the fractional part. You know it's six point something. You gotta do the fractional part. All right, so write each mixed number as a decimal. Okay, now we've already done these fractions already. So three fourths is 0 0.75, and one third is 0.33333. So negative two and or two and three fourths is two plus three fourths. So it's two plus 0.75 or 2.75, but we don't forget. Um, it's negative, so um, negative 2 and 3 fourths is negative 2.75. Okay, so 7 and 1 third is 7 plus 1 third, which is 7 plus 0.33333, which is 7.3 with the bar on it. Okay, all right, you guys, hope that lesson makes sense, and take care.